from the law Hope they won't shoot me down soon Catch me howling at the moon Welcome back to another episode. This time we're in Cradle Mountain National Park, still in Tasmania, and we're going to do some hiking over a couple of days. Yes, yeah, so in the past episode, we took you with us off roading, so now it's time to stretch your legs. So we put the alarm this morning to see sunrise. In Cradle Mountains, it's just Dove Lake. There's not much cloud, so it's not gonna be the greatest sunrise. Hopefully, we still get some nice light. So we just got back to the car, got a bit of coffee and this is what we intend to do this morning, this loop. We spoke the, with the parks yesterday so they suggested this itinerary and tomorrow we'll do the Cradle Mountain Peak. That should be a lot of hiking for the next two days. Wow, this is much more beautiful than I thought it would be. The photos don't do this place justice at all. But yeah, we're really blown away. This is spectacular. And we're only like 15, 20 minutes from the car park. Step number one, just in front of the peak, we've got some bird eggs that we made yesterday, banana with the view, and we're gonna carry on to the next lake afterwards. So Chris is gonna show you how to peel a bird egg. <laughs> so we chose to hike the Dover's Lake first because we knew it's like the most popular hike uh, in Cradle Mountain National Park. Uh, like now the people from the shuttle, the A10, AM shuttle have arrived, so it's good timing. Now we continuing towards the wombat pools, so we can see the cradle peak in the distance. The views are incredible from here. This is the wombat pool. Really nice. It's gone super hot now. Cradle Lake, there's another boat shed here. Three shallow, lots of little fish. Pro tip. Grab one of these life straws, super cheap, well worth their money. Basically it's just a filter, filters out 99.99% of bacteria and germs. All you do is just chuck it in the water, drink out of it. Really good to have on long hikes because it stops you having to carry a whole heap of water. And it's also really good safety in that if you run out of water and you're somewhere near a fresh water source or semi-fresh water source, you can drink out of it. So all you do is pop the cap, jump down, Water comes through, pretty good. Then just blow it out. Chuck it back in. I will leave the link to one of these in the bio.
Okay, so it's 5.42. So this morning we started directly at the car park and we're not doing the sunrise mission at the budget. So we're getting some time to be at the peak as early as we can. And we should be able to see the sunrise from one of the mountain range nearby. Steep. And this is Lake Wilkes. Cradle Summit is up in the fog. It's either there or here, I can't really tell. And the rains last night have created a bunch of little waterfalls, which is neat. Tiny little alpine lake, it's really cool. Above the tree line now, bit sweaty already. We'll crack on. It's so cool. The fog is starting to disappear and we can see some peaks in the distance. We can actually really see it well now with all the fog above the lake. It's gonna be a stunning day. Now we're approaching the peaks. We just couldn't believe the views. Now the huge peak, it's got a shadow on the other side of the valley. This is the path we're getting to go on top of Cradle Mountain Peak. Looks pretty steep. Gonna scramble ahead. Back in for the challenge. on top of Cradle Mountain. Yeah. We arrived just before 9 a.m. So it took us roughly three hours to get to the top with a little bit of like stopping on the way to do some filming and just admiring the views. It is incredible. It's nuts, complete 360 degree views. And there is a cloud inversion as far as the eye can see. It may not even be a cloud inversion. Maybe it's just complete <laughs> cloud. cloud cover. Clouds for days. But it's everywhere. beautiful up here. Um, yeah, can't get over it. It's almost like, it feels like you could be in like Wales or Scotland or something like that on the hike up. Yeah, it doesn't feel like Australia at all. It's weird. Yeah, it doesn't feel, it doesn't look like or resemble any other place in Australia we've been. It's like its own little ecosystem. It's really cool. Yeah, so the rock scumbling was uh, a bit steep, not too hard. Just the only tricky part today is uh, it rained a lot yesterday, so it's kind of like slippery. 
uh, but yeah, it was absolutely fine. I highly recommend you do this hike. It's absolutely worth it. Ah, oh, it's insane. All right guys, so pro tip number two is grab yourself an EPIRB, electronic personal emergency locator beacon. So there's a whole bunch of different types you can get. Some are a lot more expensive than others. Basically they all have some sort of feature where you can press an SOS button and that will be relayed to the closest emergency services and they will usually send a helicopter to come and get you. Now they're only coming to get you, they're not coming to get your vehicle or anything else. Uh, this one, Garmin and Reach Explorer Plus, not real cheap. The unit itself is quite expensive and then you have to pay a monthly subscription fee because it goes into basically the best uh, satellite GPS network in the world, which basically guarantees like 100% coverage anywhere on the planet, which is what you want obviously when you're going off the beaten path. So grab yourself one of those. Basically, if I got bitten by a snake, if one of us broke a leg and we needed to press that SOS beacon, uh, we would just have to stay put and eventually we would be rescued. When you press the SOS beacon, that then sends a signal back and it will relay that signal for quite a long time after you press the button. So if you are still moving, they will be able to find you. Now this one also has a mapping service and a text messaging service as well. That's why I really like this one. Ange and I don't use it much at all. Uh, it's more just as a backup and a security has a super long battery life and it's waterproof So I just always carry that on our longer hikes and it's always in the car with me. So yeah, good to always have an EPIRB We 
absolutely crushed it. It's behind us, where we just came from. Now we're just continuing towards Mayans lookout, just to have lunch there, and then go back to the car park. We've got a little kitchen hut for emergencies. Shall we go inside? And it's pretty decent size. You can go to the top as well. We've got like some information about to get lost, first aid. Very cool. Great idea. Okay, so the lookout is very busy. So we're just gonna find a little rock. Not too far away. We've got a better view anyway. And we're just gonna stop to have lunch. So we can finally see the lake. Earlier there was like clouds all the way. So yeah, now it looks much nicer. So pro tip number three, get yourself one of these pouch. Like so pro tip number three, get yourself one of these water bottle uh, pouch. What like this one. Pro tip number three, get yourself one of these water bottles. So this one is a platypus brand, it's like a water pouch, uh, which is just above two meters. And you can just pro tip number three, get yourself one of these water bottles. So this one is like a platypus brand, like a pouch that you can just refill. So this one is just above two liters. And when you finish drinking it, you can just pack it in your bag. Like it takes no space. So it's really handy uh, for big hikes. And I'll put the description in the link so that if you want one of these, you can grab one. Try again. And I'll put the link in the description if you want to grab one of these, you can do so as well. That was a spectacular hike guys, hope you enjoyed it. Yes, yeah, so if you've got some hiking experience, definitely recommend you do this one. Now we're going to carry on towards the Lake Sinclair for more hiking. Cheers for tuning in guys, click that bell if you want to be notified of our videos.